sister may be looking at us. She is one of Bella's kids, Kim Zemeskel, a three-year-old whippet from Houston, Texas, who jumped, leaped, swooped, pranced, and ingratiated herself into the hearts and minds of the thousands who watched here, the millions who watched at home, and the one who in his heart knew she could be what she has been. And, uh, now, you're a competitor now. I believe that you're the president. It is really hard to imagine that we could have a more exciting competition in front of a more appreciative audience than we had yesterday in the men's event finals here at the Myriad Arena. And yet, you really have the feeling that that could happen today as our attentions turn now to women's gymnastics. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Kathy Johnson, who has promised not to push me off a balance beam. And, Kathy, there is an added incentive for these women today. Yes, there is. In most cases, event finals is just the icing on the cake. But today's competition will determine the junior national champion on each event. So there are national titles at stake here. But with the all-around competition pressure behind them, they'll be a little bit more relaxed. They have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. We have been talking about Kim Zemeskel, but let it be known, it is not just Kim Kim Zemeskel and a whole bunch of others. It's Kim Zemeskel and a whole bunch of very good others. I could go on and on. Shannon Miller, Erica Stokes, Amanda Yurk, but I think there's even more than those few to watch over the next few years. Take, for instance, Amy Shear, who fell twice in the all-around competition and didn't even figure in the all-around, but I think she'll be a factor here today. Yesterday, we had four different winners in the six individual events amongst the men, and you really have an idea. We could see more of same amongst the women today. Right now, let's go back up to the top of the Marriott Arena and Jim Kelly. Jim, looking forward to watching. We're at the Myriad Arena here, and we await the women's competition. And these are the event finals. So what basically this means is that every one of the disciplines, each of the four that we will be watching today, is an event in and of itself. The scores do not carry over from the compulsories or from the all-around. This is an all-new competition. And every time one discipline is finished, it starts all over again. Six competitors in each one. And again, you can't emphasize enough, Kathy, that we are really seeing the future of women's gymnastics here in America. We definitely are, and also keep in mind that we will be naming a national champion on each event, so this is a very important competition. Amy Scherer will be the first in the vault. Each girl, and I will use that phrase, will take two vaults and we will average the two. She does a round off layout with a full twist, and she does it so well. She had a couple tiny little problems. She's a little off center, which is a deduction. <laughs> and we'll be able to see that. She had a tough time in the all around, and you can hear Bella Carolla. You will be able to hear him all day. He does have a microphone on. Another look. Now, watch. She has good form going on, good block off the horse, and beautiful position in the air. But she's just a tiny bit to the right, so that will be the deduction there. Here we can check to see if legs are together which for the most part they are. They're a little apart off the board, but it's such a slight error. And they're right there to the right of the horse. So Amy Shear will have a second vault. 9.65 her score on the first. Remember, being the first competitor, not the easiest thing in the world. Amy is really looking to do well in the, off, in the finals here. She had troubles in the all-around competition and finished farther down than she had hoped to. So I know she's really going to attack these finals. She needs a confidence booster right now, and you have an idea Bella Caroli will give her that. Now, her second vault is a layout Sukahara. Remember, in finals, you have to do two different vaults from separate groups. And this usually tells the tale. The stronger the second vault, the better. Okay, it's not as good as her first vault, but it is a very strong second vault. A layout suit is scored only from a 9.7, though. So she will already start out a little bit lower than that first ball. Now, her main deduction is in, on the on flight. A little bit sloppy in the on flight. She gets a good position in the air and then kind of pikes around, so she'll get a deduction as there as well. So we will average out the 9.65 that she had in her first vault as you look yet another time. Legs apart on the pre-flight. And a little too much pike on the landing. The average of that first and this one. And that will be her score in the vault competition. Very serious young lady. And you saw Bella Caroli go over and say, nice job, way to go. And it has been. Let's talk about the requirements and 
what a competitor has to do in this particular discipline, Kathy. Now, in the event finals, it really favors an, an optional gymnast because none of the scores carry. And they go two vaults from two different groups. That is a new requirement. So if they do a round-off vault, they will have to do a traditional entry vault as their second vault. No scores carry from the all-around competition. And the final score is reached by averaging the score of both vaults, which is also different from the all-around competition, where you get to count your best vaults. 9275 was the score on her second vault. We'll get the old abacus out now and tell you what that comes to. And it comes to 9.462. Falls where it's right there, right on top of it. This is Jana Reardon. She trains at the Parkettes with Bill and Donna Strauss, along with Robin Netwall and Rick Krause, their assistant coaches. And she performs a round off, layout full twist, a little bit low in the vault and on the landing. Those will be the two deductions there. Jana Reardon, also 13 years old. As you see, it didn't have the height or the dynamics that Amy's had. Good, clean on flight, but just doesn't get the height or the rotation and then has to take that step on the landing. This is a good angle to see the form of the vault, to see if the legs are apart or crossed. They tend to be apart on the pre-flight, but they're nice and together during the full twist. But that landing is what's going to cost her. And it did 9-3-5, the score for Jana Reardon. And now she prepares for her second vault. And she will have to make this one better than the first to move into at least temporary possession of first place. And she does the same two vaults that Amy Shear performed. She's going to do a layout Sukahara, which is scored from a 9.7. That's its value rating. Oh, a much better second ball. It's she a shame that like it's that. only scored from a 9.7 because she did it much better. It was higher. The layout position was nice and stretched. And, of course, the landing was just so much better. Another look at this one. Good form throughout the whole vault. Much higher than that last one. And look at the landing. She's got to be happy with that. So we'll see if she did enough to move herself into first place for the moment. Amy Stokes will be the next jumper. We're going to have to jump off the track, and we may not have an opportunity to see Amy Stokes' first vault live, but certainly we will have it for you. So Jana Reardon awaits her scores now, and we will let you know what those scores will be and get, bring you right up to date on what's happening. Two vaults in for the women's vault competition. This is the event final. At the Erica Stokes has vaulted here. She had a 9.325. This is her second vault. She performed... Uh a Pike Sukahara, which, first of all, is a very weak second vault. It's only scored from a 9.5, and she had a lot of trouble yeah, on that landing. Legs. She landed exactly yeah. the same way she landed the first right. one, so she's going to have some problems. You don't even need to see a replay. Now, the problem wasn't on the pre-flight. She got pretty good push off the horse, good pike position. But right here, she opened up too soon. Her chest was down and almost rebounded into a front somersault. So Erica Stokes will have better moments than the ones she has had here on the vault. Let's bring you up to date on Jana Reardon's second vault. It was scored as a 9-3-5, the same as her first vault. So even I can figure that one out, Paul. I don't, I don't need your help on this one. 9.35. The leader is still Amy Scher. 9.462. The combined for Erica Stokes. And this is Kim Zemeskel, and she is just an unbelievable vaulter. She probably has the two strongest vaults in this competition. She's going to start with a round off, tuck, full twist. She, d oh, lands very low on that vault. She was short on the front end of the horse, which gave her the problem in the air. She does that vault very differently than most people. She actually is almost laid out in the full twist and then tucks the somersault. So she twists early. Watch right here. You can see where she's on the front end of the horse, and that's where all the problems start. Just about slips off instead of pushes off, and she's really got to work here to get it around to her feet. But she didn't put the knees down or the hands down, but it's still a pretty major deduction. Doesn't count as a knockdown, I guess, huh? No. Kim Zemesco will have another. 
Now that vault was scored from a 9.9. .9. Her second vault, interestingly enough, scores from a 10. It's a handspring front tuck with a half twist. So let's not rule her out yet in this competition. And the score, and it's going to reflect that, I'm sure. Reflecting the difficulty, 9.25, despite the fact she had all those problems. So she will still need to score high here, but it's not out of the question. I watch this vault warm up. She tends to twist very early. Okay, it's almost a Cuervo vault, but it's nice and clean. It's very interesting look in the air. I think You're the judges will like the that. Bed bed. Right. No, that's it. <laughs> Ella Caroli has found a new prize student here. Let's take another look at this one, Kathy. Will it be enough? Let's look at the position in the air and when she makes that twist. She starts the somersault and twists right in the middle. Most people wait a little bit longer to do that twist. As I said, it's almost what we call a Cuervo vault. And we wait with Kim Zemesco. Of course, she liked that one. <laughs> It's actually very smart to call it a front half because a front 9. half 9.85. I'm sorry, Kathy. Don't mean to interrupt. And her average, 9.45. It will still put her in second place behind Amy Shear. Lots more to come here. Let's go up to the top of the arena now and Jim Kelly. Jim? Thank you, Barry. It's fun to watch from up top as well. Speaking of up top, the diving action heating up over at the... ESPN's live and exclusive coverage of the U.S. Olympic Festival 1989 brought to you by Scope, the best thing, first thing in the morning. And by your friends at Anheuser-Busch, who reminds you to know when to say when. And by Reebok. At the Myriad Center, a huge crowd. Kim Zemesco getting ready to go for her third gold. And Barry Tompkins, sounds like a rock concert down there. Yeah, you know, it's been that kind of atmosphere, Jim, to tell you the truth. There's bands playing. They do play very up-tempo music. And it really does keep the crowd in it. And I think it's really fair to say that yesterday when we were here, Kathy, the crowd was probably as big a story as the competition. They were so excited about the gymnastics that they were seeing. And the good thing about these audiences, I think they're very knowledgeable as well. We're waiting for the uneven bars to begin, and while we do, let's bring you up to date on what happened in the vault. The gold medal winner, Amy Shear, Kim Zemesco finished second. Those are two Bella Caroli prodigies, and Jana Reardon finished in third place. Let's take you over to the interview area now where Bart Connor is with the winner. Bart? Congratulations, Amy. What a terrific performance. I don't think a lot of people realize that you, at this very moment, have a stress fracture in the fibula of your right leg. Tell me about that. Well, about two, two months ago, I found out that I had a stress fracture in my right fibula, and I just had to work through it to, to go to this meet. That's amazing that you end up winning vaulting of all events where there's so much strain on the leg. Yeah, it, it hurts, but I just have to push through it. And what happens next? You go home to a cast? Yeah. <laughs> Is that amazing or what, Barry Tompkins? Our winner of the vault competition also has a stress fracture in her leg. What a courageous story. I'll tell you, I got a nosebleed. I'm out for three and a half weeks. <laughs> now, where was Harry the Seal, your good luck charm? Well, he's back at the dorm, but he brings me good luck anyway. <laughs> well, I guess so. Congratulations on a terrific performance. Thanks. Barry? All right, thanks very much. I want to tell you, you think these athletes aren't tough? <laughs> no question about it. Yeah. It's great to see her smile. She's such a serious gymnast. In fact, when I was speaking with Bella, he said a little too serious at times. Well, she has good reason to smile now. Let's talk about the scoring and the optional scoring in this event. Well, the value parts are worth 3.0. The combination, which is the construction of the exercise, is worth 1.5, and the execution, 5.1. Now, here's what's new. Bonus points are worth four-tenths of a point. So some of the routines that don't have the original, original elements and connections or an extra D element they will not get the 4 tenth bonus, so their routine might be judged from a 9.6. Also, we're using competition three rules for finals, which means they need two B value parts, which is in the mid-range, and a C value part. And this is a tough part. Two Ds are already required, so to get that extra D for bonus is tough. Let's talk about the requirements and what you have to do in uneven bars. Well, you have to have at least 10 elements, and only four elements can be performed in consecutive order on one bar. The fifth has to lead to a bar change, a minimum of two low bar elements, and at least one flight element. And from a few of these routines, we're going to see more than one flight element. Six competitors in this competition as well, beginning with Kelly Pitson. Kim Zemeskel, Gina Jackson, Shannon Miller, Amanda Urich, and Jana Reardon will round out the field for this second discipline. The winner of the first, the women's vault, Amy Shear. 
And you look at Bella Caroli. We mentioned Bella Caroli does have a microphone on in this competition, and you'll hear him throughout the day. Kelly Pitson, 13 years old, out of Hudson, Michigan. Open strong on this event. Beautiful handstand work. It's a giant swing to a giant with a full pirouette over the top and a nice high ginger. On these release moves, look to see that they're above the bar. She'll prepare for her dismount sequence. She's getting a little sloppy on form here. Giant swing to a double tuck flyaway. Stuck the dismount very well. That was a good one. The highlight yeah, of that routine was definitely the release move. It was very high, and the judges are now looking for <laughs> when they regress the bar oh, that their man. shoulders are level with the bar. Otherwise, they will devalue the move. Look at that. Nice height and distance from the bar. Now, at the end of her routine, she got a little bit sloppy with her feet and her legs, but not too bad. As you can see, when she passes the low bar, the toes are not pointed. Tuck double flyaway, level with the bar again. That's very good. So we'll see how much that little bobble cost her. She is the first of six competitors. Here's the second. Kim Zemeskel. A nice solid routine to start off with for the rest of the girls to aim for. And as always, there is a little bit of a delay while the judges set the standard for their scoring. Kelly Pitson plays the waiting game. Bella Caroli has said on numerous occasions he likes the competition that he has just in his own gym amongst probably as many as 10 of these young women. And the score for Kelly Pitson, 9.6 to start things off. I think we're going to see some high scores here on this event. Well, it leaves some room for this lady, Kim Zemesco, who did everything and more in the all-around and compulsory. This is actually Kim's weakest event, if you can believe it. She actually does some nice work here. A giant, and that's supposed to be a full pirouette over the bar. She actually twists one way half and then goes back to the <gasps> major break. She was supposed to go over the bar with another pirouette. Actually over the bar into her release move. A Jaeger front. It's too bad. That'll be at least a five tenth of a point deduction. So that in itself will cost her any chance at first place in this particular discipline. This is where she had trouble in the all-around. She fell on the dismount. Double pipe. It's a nice dismount. And again, she fell on the dismount the in all-around. Right you know, but now she has another mistake midway through the routine. Uh, you let your shoulders go in. She was supposed to do a giant swing down. with a half pirouette to mixed grip. She didn't quite get over the bar. And she's struggling right there. She almost had it. So now she has to cast up. So she's got an interruption in the, in the routine, the break in the handstand, and of course it puts her a little bit off going into that release move. So the release move was very low. So the door remains open now for the four remaining competitors here in the uneven bars, Gina Jackson, Shannon Miller, Amanda Urich, and Jana Reardon. Kim Zemesco with a little bit of a rough time after literally owning the competition through the first couple of days of women's events. Again, this is an area where Kim's really going to go back and have to work on is the uneven bars. So we await her score, and it, it cannot be up to Kelly Pitsons, who finished with a 9-6. She'll probably be in trouble there in terms of getting her bonus points as well, since she missed that connection. She doesn't get the originality. She doesn't get the bonus for the connection. That's why the judges are taking a little bit more time. 9-1 is the score for Kim Zemesco. Still four competitors left in this second discipline of four that we'll be seeing today. Meanwhile, let's flash over to diving and take the plunge with Tim Brando, who's going to tell us about the 10-meter women's competition. Tim? The gymnastics dialing in. The pause that refreshes. Gina Jackson has just completed a fine performance on the uneven bars, and we are awaiting her score. The leader right now, 9-6, and that put up by Kelly Pitson, who was the first competitor. Kim Zemeskel, remember, who won the all-around competition in the compulsories, had a bit of a problem in this event, finished with a 9-1. Gina Jackson was the third competitor. Shannon Miller, another local product from Edmond, Oklahoma, will beginning, will start her routine in just a moment. There is a look at Shannon and the score for Gina Jackson, 9.35. 
I think the crowd here might have thought, Kathy, that she might have scored a little bit better than that. Well, that's when why we're trying to educate the people on the scoring system so they know there are some things that they just can't see that the judges do see. There's Shannon Miller. She has been a local favorite all week long. She trains right here at Dynamo with Steve Nuno. She had the second highest score on this event in the all-around. So nice handstand pirouette to reverse hack. Again, that release move should have been a little bit higher above the bar. She does a second release move, though, a ginger, which is a flyaway with a half twist. It's really important to start seeing those two release moves in one routine. Giant swing. Half and half out. Beautiful dismount. That is one of the most difficult dismounts being done on any event. It's a full twist and two somersaults. And off the women's uneven parallel bars, that is a very difficult thing to do. And she stands to score very high. That's her teammate, Gina Jackson, who a moment ago put a 9.35 up. Take another look at this release. Here's her second release move. It's a ginger. Shannon sometimes gets a little sloppy with her form. Her knees bend, her legs come apart. But the judges are gonna be impressed with this. This is amazing. There's a half and a half. It's a full twist with a double somersault. Excellent. So now she waits. Shannon Miller, 9-6, the score to beat. That put up by Kelly Pitson. And so far, this competition very much the same way it was. And a 9-7 for Shannon Miller to move her into first place. Listen to the crowd. the judge sees is that dismount that really helps with the score moves her into first place what I started to say was this competition shaping up very much the way the men's did four winners and six events we are in our second event and are going to have our second different winner Amanda has beautiful work on the uneven bars it was a handstand pirouette to a Jaeger front she was having trouble with that in warm-ups but she really got it here She has really the best form in the competition on the uneven bars. Up, oh, legs came apart right as I said it. Double tuck fly away. It's only a couple of form deductions in there, but she had a release move. She had a handstand pure wedding move. Right. Of course, job. she didn't right. have a dismount as difficult as the one we just saw Shannon do. All I can say is I hope Bella never gets angry when he grabs those little kids by the head. <laughs> now here's her Jaeger front. Decent height, just enough to keep the value at a D, though. Will it be enough, however? Look at her dismount once more. This is a nice, clean, double-tuck dismount. Now, you see right there was the deduction, the legs coming apart in the pirouette, but the tuck was beautiful. 9-7 is the score to beat put up by the competitor just ahead of her, Shannon Miller. And now Amanda Urich waits. It's just remarkable, and again, we've been talking about the fact that this is the future. What you're looking at here are the people whose names you'll know come 1992 in Barcelona. Exactly, and they're part of the evolution of the uneven bars right now. They're allowing the gymnast to put the bars so much farther out. The rails are smaller. It's going to give them so much more room to swing. We're going to be seeing release moves in a row, back to back, like we saw last night with the men on high bar. Interesting in general, the fact that most of these girls are 13, 14 years old, change so dramatically in the next two or three years of their lives. Nine, six, seven, five, not quite enough to move into first place. It will put her in second place. So those that are being proficient right now might not necessarily be being proficient as we head toward 1992. There's gonna be a lot of changes. Let's go now back up to Jim Kelly. Jim? A 9.70 for a great effort, Shannon Miller out of Edmond, Oklahoma. She's only 12, 4, 3, and 55 pounds. The little dynamo is the leader. A report on field hockey when we come back to Oklahoma City. Well, Bella Caroli told us these girls were evenly matched after two events. We've had five different medal winners. Only Jenna Reardon has won two. Here's Barry, Kathy, and Bart. All right, thank you, Jim. As a matter of fact, in this next event here on the floor of the Marriott Arena, the balance beam competition, 
five Caroli protégés are in the six competitors. Let's take a look once more at how the uneven bars finish. Shannon Miller of Edmond, Oklahoma, wins it. Amanda Urich and Jana Rudin finish 2-3 respectively. And as Jim said, Jana Rudin, so far the only double medalist. We take you now to the balance beam. Third competitor on the beam is Amy Shear. She's looking up right at the moment at her teammate, Kim Zameskel, who put up a 9-7 a moment ago. Shannon Miller, who won on the uneven bars, 9.475 to start the beam competition. But here's Amy Shear. I had a feeling we were going to have a great balance beam competition. We've gotten off to a great start. Two back roll extensions right to handstand, showing some originality. Amy can be very tough on this event. She's very tough mentally. Here's her most difficult pass of the routine. Two layout step outs. Okay, she fought for that landing. She was a little bit off on that second layout, but she pulled it off. That's her one of the requirements, a gymnastic series, two leaps directly connected. That's a back tuck kick out to a straddle down. Another difficult move, showing her flexibility and also another requirement, the gymnast must have an element down on the beam. Preparing for the dismount, a little bit too long there on the end. Round up, double back dismount. Little hop on the landing and also a little sloppy in the air. She had that cowboy position that Bart spoke about yesterday. Oh my God, no, that was so good. we'll see if it's enough. No, no, Bella no. liked it. No, that, that made up from yesterday. Is that right? <laughs> Got a lot to shoot for here, though. 9-7, yes, yeah. and she smiles. Oh, nice to see that. <laughs> Kim's routine's going to be really tough to beat, but this was a nice, solid routine. Great angle for this. Back handspring, two layout step outs. You can see she's directly over the beam, but her legs are a little bit bent, and on the second one, her body tilted just slightly off kilter. And the dismount. Now watch, you can see this position in the air that really is not completely desirable. You should keep the legs together. So we'll see if Amy Shirt did enough. There's a look at Amy, already a winner in the vault. It's <laughs> definitely enough to be pleased about. Anytime you hit your beam routine, that's something to smile about. Yeah, it really is. And again, as you mentioned earlier, she's all business when she's competing, but she's out here today and just having a good time that I mentioned, if they are not present in the routine, it's a one-tenth of a point of deduction every single time. Two back hands, please, to lay off, step out, a little check on the landing. Just a slight deduction there. But with the scores we've got to beat, 9.75 and 9.7, you can't afford to give those away. Back handspring to a back pipe. Now that's a little bit larger deduction there on that landing. Full turn. She's met all her special requirements so far. It's an interesting back shoulder roll. Now she should be preparing for her dismount. Round off back handspring. Double twist. Most of the girls are either doing a double back or a double twist. One thing that makes that pass a little more special, she adds the back handspring. It was a nice routine. It wasn't as solid as some of the ones we've seen, All right. okay. but one That's you can be pleased about. And gets a hug from her teammate and pal, Hillary Grivich. Another look. Here's one of her acrobatic series. Two back handsprings to the layout step out. Now you see her hips are out of line, so she has to check the landing. And the dismount. She does a round off back handspring, which upgrades the difficulty of this dismount. All the girls are landing a little bit off center. It's funny. It's like there's a spot on the mat that every single one of them wants to land on. So we await the score for Amanda Urich. Might have cost herself a little bit too much. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Barsha, welcoming you to Port. Really have been impressed with these girls throughout the entire competition, but particularly here on Balance Beam. These are young kids. They're 12, 13, 14-year-old and they're handling the pressure of this event, and I think it's great. Young kids, that, that's an under... I have socks older than these kids. <laughs> <laughs> so
So another look at Amanda Yurick. We wait for the score, and there it is, 9-4-2-5. So she lost a little bit. And let's take you back just a couple of moments ago to Kim Zemesko's performance here on the balance beam, this on videotape. Of special note is no one had a single fall in the entire balance beam competition in finals. I think that's great. And lest you lose sight of it, the balance beam is four inches across. Actually, not even quite four inches, a hair under. Now, that was her Jim Acro series. She did a front handspring right into a split jump. Kim did a terrific job here. Did back handspring, two layout step outs. Just solid as a rock. Full turn. Here's her other requirement, down low to the balance beam. Now, she had the disadvantage of going early up in the rotation. That's always something tough. It's very difficult to score the highest when you go first. Two switch leg leaps in a row. That's one of the more difficult gymnastic series you can do. And the gainer layout, she stocks her routine full of difficulty. And a double tuck disc gun. Such, such a great routine. It's hard to believe that there were people that actually did better and scored higher. Yeah, she set the tone for the high score. She was the second competitor and scored a 9-7 for that. And then behind her, Amy Shearer had the same score, and Erica Stokes slightly better. Here's her two layout step outs in a row. Now, in the all-around competition, she scored a 9-7-2-5 on this event, which was the highest score of the entire competition. And that, that just emphasizes the point that you made when we first came on the air today, and that is that everybody's a little bit looser, everybody's going to try to suck it up just one more notch and get it done a little bit better, and they've done just that. Kim Zemeskel at 9-7, it wasn't to be good enough. The winner of this, Erica Stokes. We'll be back right after this. Tompkins with Kathy Johnson, Bart Connor alongside. We've just had the awards ceremony in the balance beam. Erica Stokes won that ahead of her teammates, Kim Zemeskel and Amy Shear. You know, I want to say, the guy with the toughest job in the arena is Jim Kelly. No question about it. He's got to not only keep track of all this stuff, but folks, he's working without a net. Jim, you got it. <laughs> no net, but we're getting a lot of mileage. Thank you very much, Barry. Well, Bella Caroli, of course, the premier name in ladies' gymnastics, of course, became a household name back in 1976 at the Montreal Summer Olympics with Nadia Comaneci and then Mary Lou Retton after that, and now is probably the most famous gymnastics coach here in the United States. There is Bella, who has six of his 13-year-old protégés here at this Olympic festival. John Neighbor had a chance to sit down with Bella and have an interesting chat. At the 84 Olympics in Los Angeles, Mary Lou Retton stole America's heart. But also endearing was the relationship she had with her coach, Bella Caroli. Like Nadia Comaneci before her, champions credit Bella for much of their success, and today he's viewed as a top motivator and developer of true winners. Gymnastic is uh, just like any other sport. It doesn't go just on the physical field. We are building personalities. I have a, have a great, uh, great statement always when, uh, you know, little bitty kids are walking with it, mamas and mamas. She will be a winner one of these days. I'm looking at them, and I said, at the moment, when you brought her in, and this little child is stepping in this sport, she's already a winner. That the mamas are going, oh, they're excited. How, how, how come? How? Because doing this very sport, this tremendous personality builder, character builder sport, the child going to gain something what otherwise will never on her life she would have. Self-discipline, confidence, promptness, the discipline of the work, of the knowing to take and, and the knowledge and at the same time the desire to take challenges. And not just to take it, but to win those challenges, to win the difficulties. And she's already a winner in this situation. Then the mamas are wondering, oh, but how about the gymnastic? Yes, gymnastic is the second uh, field when she can be a winner, but that's going to take a long time, a long effort, and you have to put not just her desire, but your desire to support her efficiently, promptly, and honestly. Mm -hmm. In this case, yes, one of these days, she might be a big winner. The trick, he believes, is to deliver brief reaffirmations as cues for behavior, and only as much as is absolutely necessary. 
The motivation comes out always with a short statement. Go for it. You can do it. Now is the time. Look at me. Are you controlled? Yes. Are you going for it? Yes. Now go for it. So small, short statements dropped on the right time and the right moment. It's not like pumping all the time like a ball. Pumping it up, pumping it up, poof, till pop. No. At the right time and very efficiently have to be placed on most important moments of the competition. And that one, they are working very efficiently. He just, he motivates you really well. He does a really good job with that. And um, he, I don't know, he's a really good coach and he helps you a lot. What does he say that motivates you? I don't know, he doesn't really say anything in words. He just makes like sound effects and stuff and tells you what to do and it just, it just, it works. <laughs> yeah, and so by the way, this type of motivation is applicable in all walks of life. What we are doing is a very intense, very disciplined, very practical part of the social life. We call sport, but doesn't matter. Sport or uh, uh, making hamburgers or uh, producing uh, airplanes, that's the same situation. You want, you know, to be efficient. And the efficiency is the one what you're building through discipline, through preparation, through consistency, and overall, the dedication and desire. If you put all these, these factors behind, you're going to be successful. Short, simple sentences can fire the imagination and encourage just about anyone to attempt great things. Anybody can be a motivator. I strongly believe you can use your words uh, just as efficient like I'm using my hands <laughs> and even more efficiently. I think I can. I think I will. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm John Neighbor. I'm with ESPN, and I'm working with these guys behind me. Okay. And I just wanted to say that you guys are doing so much work around here without a whole lot of attention. And I just want to say that you're the best. Okay, I appreciate and, and it. You, and we're grateful for what you do, and you keep up the good work. I appreciate it. And do a great job. Just call my office and let them know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I'm John. John Salamitters. How do you do? It's How do you do? Fine. You've got a lot of nice stuff here, and you've got a great opportunity tonight because the gymnastics is coming. You're going to sell a lot? hope so. Well, I think you will. You've got good materials. You're ready to do it. Do the best you can possibly do tonight because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You going to be ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> good. My name's John. I know you've got a lot of stuff here that you're careful with. You don't want it to, to get crushed or anything, and it's all fresh. You're the best there is at what you do, aren't you? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, come on. You can be. You can be as good as anybody doing this. I just want to encourage you. Do the job the best way you can possibly do, and it'll give you more rewards. You guys are entertaining a lot of people walking through here, and I'm sure you're the best you can possibly be. Today, give an extra special performance, all right? Amen. Be extra really good and do a great job. Okay. Good luck yeah. to you all. Thanks. Okay. Ralph, I got to tell you, I just got off, I uh, just finished my interview with Bella Caroli. And he's the number one motivator in the world. And he is so pumped. And he's got me so excited. I just wanted to come in here and motivate you. And I wanted to say that although we can't watch all of the stuff you're doing, the stuff we have seen, it's very strong. And your pictures are great, and the story is great, and I want to make, make you know that you're the best that there can be. And tonight, when you do the show, make it super good, okay? Okay. Super good. Yes, sir. Only the best. Whatever you want, sir. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. More arrows to move up to eight and make the There's our executive producer, Ralph Molay, and there is Bella Caroli. How did Bella's girls do at this Olympic festival? He came here with six competitors, and they did very well in the team competition, in the individual, and in the apparatus as well. He works very hard down at Caroli's Gymnasium in Houston. He is still very selective. There's the medal count for Bella's girls. Zemeskel, Shear, Stokes, Urich. Rivich and Pitson works seven hours a day at Caroli's Gymnasium in Houston with the girls. He is not just a front office manager. He gets involved, and he's emotional, and he's good. is brought to you by your nearby Century 21 real estate professional, a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Festival. When it comes to real estate, put your trust in number one. Kim Zemeskel, 13 of Houston, just one of six of Bella Caroli's protégés here, the leader in the women's gymnastics competition after the compulsories. She ran away from the field with a very consistent performance and an outstanding routine on the balance beam. The goal just one of two for her, as her East gym mates won the team competition too. For Kim Zemeskel, back-to-back -back golden moments. Back 
at the Myriad Arena, a packed center for the gymnastics combination. And the women on the floor exercise, Amanda Urick is up next. Barry? Third competitor, Jim, the first two, having scored 9.65, Jana McClown and Heidi Kay. Incidentally, here Tim Brando make a parallel between gymnastics and diving, and Heidi Kay was a two-time diving champion. She won the 1986 and 87 South Jersey Diving Championships. Meanwhile, Amanda Urick. Amanda was fourth in the all-around competition and scored a 9.425 on this event. Opens with a full twisting double back. <laughs> this is a fun routine. I think birds chime in a little bit later in the routine. Okay, that's a requirement of gymnastics series. The three leaps or jumps right in a row. <laughs> there are the birds. Yes, they're there. There's Big Bird right there at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> she could actually be having a lot more fun with this routine. I'm surprised she's not smiling. Whip over through to a double tuck. Perfect landing. Good middle pass. Full twisting back hands free. But you know, you make a really good point here, Kathy. Don't you really have to go out there and sell this? Yes, you do. And she's very young, and with time, she'll learn to do that, just like in that part in the corner. And final tumbling run. A double back and another good landing. That was really the strong point of routine, are the landings of the tumbling passes. You don't want to give away any tenths of a point taking this step. Scores have been high today, and the first two put up 9.65. You have to think Amanda Urich could have a chance here. Now, that's the smile you want to see in her routine, but I think she's concentrating on the tumbling passes. Another look at her first pass. She opened with a full twist and double back. Watch, you'll see the full twist in the first somersault. And then she pulls that second one around in tuck position. Came close to stepping out of bounds there. This is one of my favorite passes. She does a whip back right here and tumbles through to another double back, which makes that pass different from her last pass Score when she repeats a double back. Amanda and in the rules, you cannot have two of the same tumbling passes. 9 7 0 for Amanda Eric will move her into first place. Three competitors, however, now still to come. Look at the, the crowd here at the Marriott year, Arena. A larger crowd Erica today Stokes. than we've had in the past. Capacity here about 13,000. I'd have to say, Clark Connor and I were talking about this a little earlier. What would you say, 8,500, 9,000 maybe? Erica Stokes now coming off a win on the balance beam. Erica doesn't have the same difficulty as the other gymnast. She opens with a double pike, actually lays out the first one. I'm not sure if the judges will give her credit for a layout pike, though. Nice double turn. She shows such perfection in her movement. This is a gymnastic series of three leaps in a row. This is beautiful. The handstand pirouettes in straddle position. Her choice of music also has gotten the crowd into it. Really seems to have picked everybody up. Definitely helps to get the crowd behind you. <laughs> Little wiggle in the corner before her second pass. Whip over. Due to a double full. Now this is where she doesn't show the difficulty that she needs to. She needs to be doing more double backs. She needs a full twisting double back somewhere. But that comes in time. Full twisting back handspring. Again, one of the more technically perfect gymnasts here. Double back! Oh, barely pulls it around. Erica Stokes. I'm glad to see her put that double back at the end. She needs difficulty like that in the routine. <laughs> but as you can see, she All really right. had to work hard for that. Take a look at her first pass now, Erica Stokes. And we'll see how long she stays laid out in the first somersault. She's really trying to hit a stretched position here before she pulls it into the pipe. 
Could have been stretched a little bit longer. And the last pass, and you were saying this is good. It's good because she needs more difficulty in the routine, and to put the double back at the end, which she hasn't done in the past, but boy, she's working here to get it around, lands with her legs apart. It's a pretty substantial deduction, but I'm glad to see her do it. So it might be something for the future, if not for today, for Erica Stokes. There she is. And when we come back to the Myriad Arena, we will tell you how she scored. She has a 9-7 that put up by Amanda Urich to beat. We'll be back. We are back to competitors left in the floor exercise for Erica Stokes, a 9.575. And that will not quite get it for her. She remains in fourth position right now. Here's Shannon Miller. Shannon already a winner on the uneven bars today. The audience is going crazy for her. She hasn't even started yet. She scored a 9.1 yesterday because she fell. Full twisting double back. Oh, no. Almost exactly the same thing happened yesterday. She did it on her last pass yesterday. She under-rotated. Now she's overdoing things. really too bad, but you don't want it to take away from the terrific job she's done here at the festival. Two whip overs, through a double twist punch front, great pass. One of the best middle passes being done here. Double turn, tiny little bobble there, but she goes right into the gainer back handspring, which is her gymnastics acrobatic series. of Torval and Dean. Pulls it around. Perfect. That's where she had trouble in the all-around competition. She nails that one and had trouble with the first tumbling run. She'll get it together. There's no question about it. It shows she's capable of it. Oh. It was actually a better first pass than she did the day before because it was higher. A little higher than she expected, though. Good, clean form in the air. Look at that nice, tight body. Pulls it around too far. Legs are way underneath her. She has to sit down. And, of course, out of bounds. That's going to be six-tenths of a point deduction. So compounding the fall by going out of bounds. And the last run. The highlight of her routine here. It's tough to end with the double bat. She pulls it around in piked position, too, and just nails it. So Shannon Miller, an outstanding performance, but... Clutching the gold medal she has already won, as you can see. And that is definitely something to take home and cherish. Go, Cam! There it is. Well, as you can see, gymnastics is definitely a sport of trial and error. When you're this young, when you're just starting out, you live and learn. Well, she's had an inordinate amount of pressure on her this week because it is before the home folk, and we mentioned this the other night on the air, but it's worth mentioning again. She was actually the lead story on a local newscast here. She's been in every newspaper. Every reporter in and around Oklahoma City has been after her. That's a lot of pressure for a young kid. And she had the added pressure of winning the first qualifying meet coming into this. 9.05 for Shannon Miller. She will have better days, to be sure. Oh, you're staying up all night tonight. You can hear it's like prom night, isn't it? Did you go out of bounds, too? Now the score has changed to 8.95. That was the deduction for out of bounds. The one-tenth of a point deduction. Isn't it funny how it used to be a thrill to stay out all night, and now I dread it. <laughs> this Kim could Zemeska. very well be a highlight here in this competition. She is terrific on this event. You're looking at Rick Newman right here. He's an assistant coach for Bella, and although Bella's the one that everybody knows, he's been in the background and worked with these kids since day one. Yeah, Bella, Bella has... The woman behind the man and the man behind the man. Exactly. He's got a lot of good people working for him. First pass is a full twisting double back and nails it. She does that as well as any junior in the world. Very 
European sounding music here. Yes. Now what's good about Kim is see how her head is nice and high. She gets her facial expression into the routine which matches the music. The middle tumbling run is a whip over due to a double back. Terrific. She has so much power on her tumbling. Gymnastic series, three straddle jumps. Wouldn't you like to know what her vertical jump is? <laughs> We have the Cuban high jump eight feet today, and he might be able to learn something from this four foot five inch gymnast. And a double back landed a tiny bit short, but really recovered well. Kim Zemesco. Really nice routine. Good. Good. Excellent Good. tumbling. I don't know landing on that, I know. <laughs> All right. This is a really super full twisting double back. Nice tight form. Only thing there is she pulls it around in a straddle position. Those legs should actually be together. Now her second pass. She does a whip over through to a double back. Now see, this is the level of difficulty you want to see at this point in their career. Did you see how much height she got out of that last? Keep in mind, she's what, all of four foot three? Way up above her head. And another double back. As you can see, she was a little bit short and had to hop forward. That'll only be a slight deduction. What she needs is better than a 9-7. Her score, 9-7-5. Kim Zemesco has won the women's floor exercise. So we've had four events. We have had four different winners. Three of those four winners are Bella Caroli students. It has been quite an afternoon for Bella Caroli. Now back upstairs to Jim. Jim. Thank you, Barry, and thank you, Kathy. I have to tell you one little story about Shannon Miller. The crowd, of course, very excited to see the local favorite, just 12 years of age out of nearby Edmond, Oklahoma. So even while some of the other competitors were getting ready to compete, crowd was crying out it's Miller time how about some future Shannon Millers well let's take a look at at least one who hopefully one day will make it into this US Olympic Festival she was practicing in the aisles while Shannon was doing her routine we'll be right back to Oklahoma City with more action from this 1989 US Olympic Festival The results are in, the women's event finals, the floor exercise final standings, the gold goes to Kim Zemeskel, Amanda Urick gets the silver, the bronze to Heidi Kay, Erica Stokes fourth. And let's check some other results. Quite a performance by Bella's girls as they collected 10 of the 15 medals. Action here at the Myriad Center. Don't forget, two hours of live coverage tonight. More to tell you about when we come right back.